Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. A video in which I hope to shed some light, if you don't mind the pun, on whether or not planter filters are doing anything really beneficial for the fish in your fish tank. Now by planter filters, I mean all of them. Uh, from the simplest ones like this here, which is just some hornwort bubbling inside a container, to the high humidity planter filters I build, to algae scrubbers, to whether or not you have some pothos hanging in your aquarium and the roots are dangling down and obviously getting some food out of that, to a well-planted aquarium. Now they all are, for all intents and purposes, planter filters because they involve plants. And the common conception out there right now is that they will denitrify your aquarium and supply a nice healthy environment. But I have been putting out a few videos lately, a lot of them about planter filters and uh, other things along those lines, and I've been noticing from some of the comments that there seems to be a bit of confusion as to what is actually going on and how much of a benefit there is. In this video I want to focus on the two most important things for most aquarists, and that is the production of oxygen and the removal of nutrients. Now, when it comes to nutrients, I'm going to focus obviously mostly on the two that matter the most, which are the various forms of nitrogen and phosphate. To get to that, I need to talk about what's happening inside the plant, and that obviously deals with photosynthesis. And this is where most of the confusion happens. Photosynthesis is divided into uh, two groups of reactions, uh, the light reactions and the dark reactions. The light ones are fairly straightforward, most people understand that. It's the dark reactions that trip people, most people up, and that is because they don't require darkness for them to go on. They are going on all the time. It's probably easier for you to think of it as the simple aspect of the plant going through its metabolic process. It needs to uh, make new things, uh, cellulose, uh, store uh, energy, and it needs to grow, it needs to do all those things, make proteins, and those reactions are all tied up into the dark reactions. Now, I'm going to start with the easy one, which is light reactions, because it is the easiest for most people to understand. You need light, either sunlight or artificial light, and you need water. And that water and light are going to uh, go into a reaction in the chloroplasts, and what happens is the hydrogen is stripped off of the water, and you end up with oxygen, which is the production for your aquarium. And then that hydrogen is used in, I'm sorry, I have to use chemical terms here, NADP, which is nicotine adenine dinucleotide phosphate. And that's where that hydrogen goes. It changes it from NADP to NADPH, which is energized then. And then that can go into the dark reactions or the Kelvin cycle and things happen there. We'll get to that in a minute. The other thing that happens is the phosphate part of that, which is uh, ADP, which is adenine diphosphate. Uh, it gets energized to ATP, which is adenine triphosphate. Now, those two chemicals, NADP and ADP and their energized forms, are exactly the same as the ones that happen in humans and every other living thing. Those two are those two chemicals are the fuel for pretty much every living thing on this planet. I mean that's that cycle there. Obviously we do not use light. We get our energy from food sources, but that's the only real difference. So that's all that happens in the light reactions, and they do require light. And that's all and that's the whole process there. So you only get oxygen production uh, during the day, or sorry, during your whenever your lights are on for your fish room. And it does require certain parameters and other stuff, but I'm not going to get into any of that. The dark reactions, the ones that matter for nutrient removal, because that's where all that happens, where uh, the nitrogen is uh, used up to make proteins, and to a lesser extent the phosphate, because it's not as, uh, it is not a, as an abundant uh, resource for plants, they don't need it as much as they need nitrogen. Uh, but what happens is they take the energy that has been absorbed from uh, the sunlight and they convert it into sugars. And those sugars are stored in plants as uh, starches, and in humans it is glycogen, 
Uh, it's the same process, it's just a slightly different chemical, that's all. Now plants will also take that and instead of taking those sugars and producing it as a, uh, keeping it as a storage item for energy, uh, they, can, they also make their cell walls out of it, and that is cellulose. For us, it's undigestible. Uh, there are bacteria that feed on that, of course, like, and ruminants and that sort of thing, but let's not get too carried away far from the topic here. Uh, so there you go. Those are the light and dark reactions for all intents and purposes. So uh, I had a comment recently. Someone asked me, uh, do planter filters uh, absorb nitrogen and phosphate and that sort of stuff? Uh, at night and the answer is simply is yes they do if the plant is not absorbing enough light and energy during the day the plant is not thriving but if the plant is healthy and it has stored sufficient energy and it is growing and doing well those dark reactions are occurring uh, all day long whether it's daylight nighttime or whatever so you're always continually uh, producing new uh, tissues and new, um, well, the plant is growing, so it is removing those nutrients from your water. Now, hopefully I haven't confused you too much there, but that is the, the short answer, I think, to uh, whether or not planter filters are actually removing anything from your water. The ratios now are where most people uh, get confused. There are tanks uh, that I've seen where you have people who are raising like a lot of baby fish. Like take my uh, Pleco breeding tank, for example. There's an awful lot of plants in there. Uh, there's uh, the planter filters and everything. It is not enough to keep up with the amount of food that's being metabolized by uh, the fish in there and the snails and uh, the shrimp and scuds and everything else that's in there, all the animal life. The plants simply do not require as much um, nitrogen and phosphate and all that sort of stuff as uh, us <laughs> who are using them. So you end up with, uh, you do need to require, you know, cleaning filters and all that sort of stuff. If you have a lower population of fish and you are feeding uh, much more regularly in smaller amounts, uh, planter filters are amazing. They will uh, remove a lot of uh, nutrients. And even in the worst case, like with like, the pleco breeding tanks you are still supplying a benefit it's just not as you can't really balance the tank out i have a meaning to get to a video uh, talking about how to balance aquariums the main problem is it is a very difficult concept to talk about it's easier to show and unfortunately um, that's not really possible through this media uh, I, if i have to figure out a way of doing it i'll probably try and do that as well uh, it, I can tell you exactly how to tell if a tank's not balanced, uh, but anyway, this, <laughs> that'll be for another video for sure. So, uh, hopefully I haven't confused you guys too much on this. Uh, the short answer, again, is planter filters are amazing for fish tanks. Don't expect them to do too much because... The metabolism is what matters, uh, and if it's a high metabolism plant like Elodea, Anacris, so Hornwort, that sort of thing, you have a better chance of it, but you need an awful lot of plants for each um, fish or biomass uh, ratio, whatever you want to call it, for it to balance out completely. If you see a lot of really nice planted aquariums that are doing really well and there's, a, there's not very many fish in it, that is the reason for that. It, it balances out better that way. You can get down to the point where you don't really need to do any water changes. But again, you're having a lot more plants than you're having fish. So that's pretty much that. And as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm probably missing a whole pile of stuff because it's hard to think off the top of your head when you're doing these things. Uh, let me know below, and if you have suggestions for anything along the lines where you want to be put to sleep with more chemistry, uh, let me know about that as well. I mean, uh, I'm trying to keep this uh, for, you know, general audience use. I mean, I did do one recently, and some people were asking for more in-depth chemistry. Uh, it's unfortunately you know, difficult to do that again by talking about it. I suppose I could start doing up charts and stuff, but I, again, it's there. There are ways of figuring that stuff out if you're really interested in it. I rather just keep this uh, more general use for uh, people just who want to have a little bit of knowledge of what's going on in their planter filters.
If you have other options uh, for other ways of doing this, let me know. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.